but I was absolutely blown away by this movie. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little movie review on a movie called Brick from 2005. Now, a few years ago, I actually searched up best mystery movies and I went through like an entire huge list and all the ones that stood out to me, I watched them all and I was like, I'll kind of like put the genre to the side. I was feeling like watching a mystery, so I'm like, let me Google it again. I found this one list and they put Brick pretty high. I think like out of 25, they put like number four and it was from 2005, so I knew it was gonna be right up, you know, my genre for my age group. So I decided to watch it. It's got Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which he's great in this movie, but the opening scene, you see the main character, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, kneel down looking at the body of this girl and then they go from there and it's basically just a mystery movie. So let's get into the pros of Brick. The pros is that it was really, really, really engaging. Now, so I watched Brick after a few movies that I just really, really didn't like. So I was kind of struggling to find the motivation to put this movie on. Um, I had to go do something later on, like 30 minutes is the last thing I had to do in the night. And I was like, okay, I got a little bit of time. Let me just start this movie get the basic idea in my head, then go do my errands, and maybe I could just play around with the basic idea of the movie once I watched 10 or 15 minutes of it. But I just literally could not put this movie down. I, you know, basically put off my errand as long as I possibly could. I was completely entertained almost from beginning to end with this movie. I really enjoyed, obviously it's a mystery movie and all the mystery aspects were really realistic, but I also find the actual character of Brennan to be very mysterious and then also his friend. You almost get like there's some reason and some backstory to why Brennan is the way he is. He pretends that he had this whole drug dealing run a little while ago, which would explain it, but um, the events later kind of make it seem like he was making that up. So I just really enjoyed the whole chemistry of him and then also his friend Brain. And his friend Brain is the only person that he really trusts. Everybody else he kind of keeps a big up, big guard to except for Brain. And then Brain is also very interesting as well because he makes note that he hasn't seen Brennan in a while, but they know how to work so well. And Brain is just, they're basically just these really mastermind kids who are kind of like loners who kind of pretend that they're not really smart but they really are. Everything kind of felt really natural and you could tell he's going and trying to figure out as much as he possibly can and he gets this slow drip of information that, that is really satisfying and it's realistic but I also found the ways that he goes about it is just very very interesting. He tries to ask some people that he already knows and tries to figure out a little bit of information and when the people that he kind of trusts don't really know anything and he wants to actually be a detective, you feel like he's gonna go and ask around like about her, the person that's missing. But his idea is to like not tell anybody that he's interested in this girl whatsoever. Go do all these crazy random stuff with these people he wants information out of to slowly get them to drip the information back to him because he thinks that if he were to just ask the question, that the people involved would run away and hide and they'd have their guard up. So it's very unique and I really appreciated the way that he went about this movie and that he's literally trying to tell almost only Brain what he's doing. Okay, the mixed aspects of this movie, I only have one, is that they had a couple slow scenes in here and the only reason that it's not fully in the cons is that the slow scenes don't really last, you know. I would say it's about max like three minutes, like there was a point where you know, a girl's playing piano and then he goes and talks to her and it's just really, really slow for right that point. There was also another really slow scene where a character cries. I'm not gonna say who it is, but it was a little like, oh, give me a break, you know. But besides that, it had some really, really good pacing and I only put that in mixed because it went right back to the action really quick. And then this is also a really, really aggressive movie. When this movie wants to go 100 miles an hour, this movie goes 100 miles an hour, so. Mixed aspects is there were some slow scenes. Okay, the cons, I mean, this movie was w like almost infinitely better than I could have ever expected, but I did notice some cons. Um, there's some inconsistencies. When Brennan first finds the body, he walks up to her and he's like actually pretty far away from the body. He's like 10, 15 feet away. He just sees her laying there. He has no reaction whatsoever. He doesn't run up to see if she's even alive. I guess the first thing I would do, if I was looking for a girl and I just see 
the, her laying on the side I, and I don't think there was any blood. Well, why would you just walk up and then just kneel and think about it? Like if he really cared as much as he did, it just is a little weird the way he acted. It's almost like he just seeing the body he knew she was dead, but it didn't even look like that to me. This is kind of like a nitpick, but I wish there was a little bit more drama in the finale. Uh, I think the movie's about an hour and a half, and in about an hour 10, I would say, you find out like the big punchline of this movie. And there is more later on to fill. It's not just like it just sizzles out from there. But the last moments in the last scene of this movie, I wish it was just a little bit more dramatic. The final character that gets screwed in this movie is just you know, there's almost no reaction at all to anything, which is just a little weird. And then the also the final scene was a scene or a place that they had reused in the movie before. And that's okay because they had a good amount of scenes, but I kind of wish that the finale of the movie went somewhere that wasn't a repeat place that we had already seen. Very small nitpicks. And then the other cons is that it's obviously indie. If I were to rate this movie, I'd give it like an 8.5 out of 10. To me, a 9.5 is perfect. If this was tuned up just the hair, I'd probably give it a nine. I really, really, really enjoyed this movie. If I were to say buy, stream, or pass this movie, I would go with a hard buy personally, but it isn't the most glamorous movie you've ever seen. It is, it is very cheap, although you don't notice it, at least I didn't, so. I would say rent it first just to see what you think, but I was absolutely blown away by this movie. And if I was gonna do a top 10 movies that you've never heard of that are really good, this is 100% one that I'm gonna think of. And for some reason, it's it's more of for people who like a really, really good story. I'm, I'm a little more guilty. I do like a good story. I like trying to figure things out and having good twists and turns over just a bunch of crazy action. And that's what this movie was. So maybe people who are kind of bored and you know, they wanna see a bunch of flying colors and stuff, this may not be for you, but I absolutely loved it. So let me know what you think of Brick from 2005. Let me know what your favorite mystery movie is down below. I've pretty much watched all the popular mystery movies in the last you know, 30 years or so. So if you have anything else, like maybe something I haven't seen, let me know down below because I highly recommend Brick. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I could not do it without any of you guys help you guys are the best having a great day out here hopefully having a great day at home see you all in the next video peace